This, it, this is a book about the hunt for us in the data that we produce every day. We all produce mountains of it, whether it's online or with cell phones or with credit cards. There are lots of details about us, billions and billions of details that are piling up in huge databases. Our lives are in those databases, but the only people that can go in and find us there are the people that I call the numerati. These are computer scientists and mathematicians, and they have the tools to find the patterns in all that data and find each one of us and define us as shoppers, voters, patients, even potential terrorists. And they, they not only study us, but they predict our behavior. And they're getting more, more and more powerful with every day. The numerati are computer scientists, mathematicians, engineers for the most part. They work at places like Google and IBM and lots of startups all over the world. And what, what's new about them, they've always been around these people. And they've always, they specialized in things like machines, building machines, buildings, structures. They've never really dealt with humanity before because humanity is way too complex for them. And so they've left humanity to the humanists to the psychologists, to the authors, to the advertising executives who, who understand what makes people tick. But now these numerati have the keys to the, all this knowledge about us, our data. And so they are coming into the worlds that were formerly dominated by, by the humanities folks. And they're overtaking entire industries. They're overtaking advertising and, and my own journalism industry. and. Uh, it, and, and medicine, almost in every area where data is accumulating, and that's every area, the numerati are asserting themselves. You know, a lot of people are worried about the end of privacy. I would argue that we really haven't had that much privacy through our history. If you ever, if you ever lived in a small town, there are snitches in the neighborhood, there's all kinds of gossip. You have to count on clerk's discretion about what you buy, how much vodka you consume in a week, what kind of movies you rent. And all of those things are, are out there. And so we haven't had that much privacy, and a lot of us at least haven't had that much privacy. Now, the, the numerati, they get all kinds of details about our lives, but for the most part, it's machines that are, that are understanding us. It's machines that are processing the data about millions of us. And it's not people that are, that are enjoying looking at our, at our behavior. And so there's a certain amount of privacy in that. Now, if the machines point to one of us as a potential terrorist or the potential buyer of a $2 million condo in Malibu, then they hand over the work to humans and the humans do look at our data. And some people worry about our pri their privacy in those situations. And I guess my advice would be that if you're concerned about your privacy, stay off the networks, don't use your cell phone, don't use the internet, pay your, pay your tolls with cash. And uh, if you have any secrets, discuss them with people you trust face to face behind closed doors. Yeah, it's funny, the things that I, the things that I learned in this book, I'm coming to see uh, they're affecting my industry in, in journalism. It used to be at Business Week that you'd have a million subscribers and you'd have an editor and you'd have advertisers. And the editor would use his gut to try to figure out what a million people would be interested in. We would produce the articles that those people would read and the advertisers would say, well, a certain number of those people will want cars and software and financial services, etc." And we were all happy, basically ignorant. Now what's happened with the internet and with the numerati is that people can now look at certain readers and say that reader is really only interested in this subject, this subject, and this subject, and he really liked this. And he can really be interested in this type of ad and that type of ad. So they're, they're cutting up our population into tiny little buckets, and they're figuring out which of our production works for that and which of the advertisings, which of the advertisements work for that. And, um, I think eventually they're going to get to the point where they're going to be able to say, they're going to be able to evaluate me by my production and figure out which articles that I write are most valuable, which ones generate the most revenue. And so I think, I think 
our whole industry is being overrun by the Numerati. What surprised me most about what the Numerati were doing was their ability to jump from one domain to the other. You know, we usually think that people who deal in advertising deal in advertising, people who deal in physics deal in physics. In the Numerati, I met this guy at Microsoft Research named David Heckerman. Now, he was trying to build a system to protect email from spam. And as he was doing this, he began trying to figure out how the spammers were altering the spam to get through his defenses. So what he had to do was anticipate mutations of spam. Now, Heckerman is also an MD, and he said, you know, if I can anticipate mutations of these types of systems, maybe I can use the, exactly the same algorithm to model HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. So he jumped. He jumped from spam into, into the battle against AIDS, and Microsoft is right there with him. And what's really surprising is that the Numerati can make these jumps because the underlying mathematics and sometimes the algorithms are the same from one domain to the other. It's really exciting because a breakthrough in one area can cause a breakthrough that you don't expect in another. It can be really inspiring. And one of my, one of my sources told me that he thinks the next Jonas Salk uh, will not be a doctor but a, a mathematician because they're going to find these, they're going to find the secrets in the, by, through the analysis of this data. My final chapter is about the numerati and love, specifically dating services. So to test it out, I dragged my wife into the research and we both signed up for chemistry.com. We both filled out these enormous profiles and answered all their questions. And then we checked to see whether they matched us together. And to our surprise and horror, we weren't matched together. And they were lining up my wife with all kinds of people. They lined her up with this one guy on the far side of JFK Airport. That's an hour and 45 minute drive from here. And they weren't lining her up with, with me. I was living in the same town. I was living even in the same house. And for some reason, they weren't lining us up. So what was wrong? Well, I analyzed it and I found one piece of data that I had filled out incorrectly on the form that was keeping me away from my wife. And I'll tell you about it in the book, what that piece of data was. But I, I, all I can say is when I corrected it, we lived, we, they, they matched us together and we, we've been uh, happily married ever since.